Hello everyone and welcome back to another Sensei series. Often when I'm making these videos I find myself saying something along the lines of this stuff takes time, don't rush it, go slow. So today we're going to switch it around and I'm going to show you seven fun, quick and easy guitar tricks. These are concepts you can implement without too much effort. Links to individual points in the description, let's dive in. Number one, shifting pentatonic inversions. And I'm guessing there's a more conventional name for this that I'm not aware of, but the basic idea is you play your pentatonic shapes two positions over from where you normally would. Let me explain. Say we're playing over an A minor chord. Typically we would pick notes from our first pentatonic shape starting on the fifth fret. We would then go up the neck playing the rest of the pentatonic shapes in their respective positions. The second inversion starting on the 8th fret, the third inversion starting on the 10th fret, and so on. Well with this trick you recalibrate, so when you're playing over that same A minor chord, instead of playing the first inversion starting on the 5th fret, you're now playing the third inversion there. You then play the rest of the shapes accordingly, the 4th inversion starting on the 7th fret, the 5th inversion starting on the 10th fret. It offers a bit of a different flavor without going too far out in left field, let me do an example. Here's why this works, if we compare the 1st pentatonic shape starting on A with the 3rd pentatonic shape starting on A, there's only one note that's changed. Instead of playing C's, we're now playing B's. Within an A minor chord, there's a C, so using that note in a solo is obviously going to sound quite nice. There is no B in an A minor chord, but it's a really nice extension that sounds great over top. This concept will work with most other minor chords, I just happen to pick an A because it's nice and easy. Next up is the Hendrix bar chord, and bar chords are a guitarist rite of passage. They're especially hard to learn, they hurt the fingers a little bit, but we all go through it. Well, there's something cool you can do with bar chords rooted on the E string. Jimi Hendrix was the first one I know to have done this, but there are many more who've done it since him. The two chords we'll focus on are the major chord based on the E string and the minor chord based on the E string. Instead of playing that major bar chord with our index finger pressing down every string, we bring our thumb over top of the neck, playing the root, and the rest of the strings are fretted accordingly. What this does is it frees up our pinky to add some embellishment onto the chord. Our ring finger is also now in a place where it can add some flair and it's easier to slide around the index finger. The same can be done with minor chords. With this you can add some interest in your rhythm work, here's a musical example. Next up on our list comes from the David Gilmore School of Sounding Awesome, the minor third slash double bend. This time imagine we're soloing over top of a D minor chord. What we do is we find the D on the B string and right here there's this wonderful bend you can do where you bend it up three frets also known as a minor third. There's also a double bend you can do here where you take that note, bend it up two frets and then bend it up one more half step to create the minor third. This will work on other minor chords too if you start the bend on the note that is the root of the chord. It's very Gilmore-y and here it is in practice. Number four I call the Dave Matthews chords because he's one of the few people I've ever seen use these and he uses them a lot. There's two different shapes we need to learn, you only need two fingers to play them and they sound great. The first shape you take your middle finger, stick it on the second fret of the E string and take your ring finger and put that on the second fret of the G string. The A string is blocked by your middle finger and the D string drones out. This is shape one. The second shape is quite similar. We now move our middle finger to the third fret of the E string and our ring finger goes to the fourth fret of the G string. A still blocked, D still drones out, this is shape two. Moving up the neck we play the second shape on the fifth fret, the first shape on the seventh fret, first shape on the ninth fret, 
second shape on the 10th fret, and first shape on the 12th fret. This gives us a scale of sorts with these chords. Here they all are in a row. With these, we can make some wonderful melodic chord progressions. Moving on, E pentatonic open strings, and this one will work best in the key of E minor or its relative major G. Our first pentatonic position in E minor uses all the open strings. We can use these open strings to add a bit of flair when using other pentatonic inversions. Here are a couple licks that incorporate this idea. This is one where it's best to experiment yourself and see what you can come up with. Use the examples provided as launching points for your own creativity. And on the subject of open strings, number six on our list takes our open chord shapes and moves them into different places. With this, I'll provide you with a number of examples with the ones that I use the most. Take your basic C shape, move it up two frets so it's now in the D position and you get this wonderful D chord. That right there is probably my favorite guitar chord. You can also take that same shape and move it so that the root is now on a G, giving you this sound. Here's another. We take our open A minor seven chord, move it up to the E minor position, put our index finger on the seventh fret of the A string, let the G and E strings ring out, and we get this. You can also do that same shape two frets down to get a D minor chord. Next one takes the open E major shape, moves it up five frets to the A position, giving us this. You can also do that two frets higher to give you this sound. These chords are pure shimmery goodness. If you ever get the chance to play them on a 12 string acoustic, sit back and watch the heavens unfold. Next on our list comes from the world of flamenco guitar, but you can use them in whatever style you play. They are two right hand finger embellishment techniques. Let's take an E major chord for the examples, but in practice you can use them on whatever. This is the first technique. You hit the strings one finger at a time, starting with the pinky, kind of flicking them as you go. You're essentially rolling your fingers over top of the strings, hitting them four times, creating that dramatic flair. Here it is again in slow motion. Our next technique is a bit more tricky. It uses our index finger and thumb to pick the strings. First, you hit all the strings with the outside of your index finger using a downward motion. Then as your arm comes up, you hit the strings first with the outside of your thumb and then the inside of your index finger. Here's the full motion, first slow and then fast. Let's hear both of these techniques in practice. Nice little tricks to add to your rhythmic toolbox. I find it best to use them sparingly so they keep their flair. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Seven fun, quick, and easy guitar tricks. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can find a place to implement these. I wanna remind you guys that as of this month, I'll be starting monthly giveaways through my Patreon program. It doesn't matter what tier you support me at or where in the world you are. If you're a patron, you're automatically entered to win the draw for every month you're involved in the program. For this month, April 2018, I'll be giving away this guitar pedal right here, the Pride of Texas Overdrive by Dan Electro. I used it for every example in this video. It's well built, it sounds great, and it could be yours. There are also a number of other rewards I offer through the Patreon program, such as the jam tracks you heard with this video. Please consider hitting that link over there. For those of you already involved, thank you so much. It really does make a huge difference in what I do. And for those of you new here, hit that subscribe button. I put out new videos every Mondays and Thursdays. It's a wide range of music related content. Until next time, thank you all for watching. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I will see you again soon. Soon.